All right, hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. And of course, if this is your first time tuning in, I'd appreciate it if you were to subscribe. And if you hit the bell, you'll receive notifications of future videos. All right, so it's been a full week. Uh, the previous inspections were about five days apart. I decided over this past week to give them a full seven days. So I'm gonna try and stick to coming out here just on Sundays. So seven days between inspections. Uh, we're gonna get into hive number one. It is a single deep brew chamber, queen excluder with a medium super. If you look back at the previous videos, I ended up switching this super with another one. Initially, I had a brand new super on, brand new foundations, um, or brand new foundation to where I think it just didn't have enough wax coating to where the bees weren't really enticed to come up into the super and start working it. There's a whole bunch of other various reasons that folks have left comments between uh, social media platforms, Instagram and Facebook, as to why they think the bees weren't in there. But either way, I switched it out with another super that did have some drawn comb. It looks like the bees are starting to work it more than they were previously. So we're gonna get into there, check on the super, see how things are going That now that we have a pretty decent nectar flow going. And I'm gonna see how this works. So this is the first time using this. I purchased it last week off Amazon. It was about 10 bucks. It is a nine frame honey super spacer. So it's designed for a 10 frame box. I'm gonna end up pulling one of the frames out, most likely one of the frames that just doesn't, doesn't have any wax on there, and then uh, see how this works for the first time. I imagine it'll work, you know, just fine. It's, as you can see, it's not uh, the most rigid plastic. It, it has some flex to it, but that really doesn't matter because all, all I'm gonna use it for is to make sure the frames are spaced evenly. And if you don't know why some folks would do that instead of running 10 full frames of well 10 full frames for their honey harvest is it's been proven that you can actually get more honey out of nine frames than 10 because the bees will draw out the frames pretty thick in between so i'm sure the i'm sure the super frames do not look like that at all but either way let's get into the hive see how they're doing and we'll just go from there And if you're curious about what that is, if you look back at a previous video, I shared a quick how-to light your smoker with a torch. All right, so usually I just kind of check on a few frames. Don't really do too much to the super, but since I plan on using this frame spacer, I'm gonna pull one of the Probably one of the outside frames out, like this one here. Not much going on. Not much as in absolutely nothing. And then, just kind of move things around a little. And you know what? I did checkerboard some of these frames for the usual reasons to get them to work it some more, but since bees usually work from the inside out. I'm gonna put the best frames in the middle. So, you know, if they don't really get around to storing that much nectar, at least I should be able to pull the center frames. All right. And I don't know if it's just the area or one of the other million factors but this colony is just really slow going when it comes to putting some honey nectar really and curing it to honey into the box here all right so again first time using this give all the frames a little space see how this works. Okay, so that's it's like a two-handed operation, really. <laughs> it's not as easy as you would think it would be. Okay. 
Better than that. What am I doing here? There we go. Okay. So you just gotta kind of move them. You gotta get them going initially. It just looks like everything's crooked, real. And then, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's not too bad. Didn't come with instructions. It's kind of uh, self-explanatory what you know what you're trying to do. You're just trying to give all the frames equal space. So, seems like it kind of works. It's not terrible. Here, let me give you a Give you a close-up, I guess. So, now they're evenly spaced with a little extra space, not much, in between the frames. And not to be skeptical, but I doubt I will see this colony pack out the frames that thick this season. But I guess, you know, hey, you never know, right? All right, so, yeah, it takes a little bit to get going, but pretty good tool. All right, so like usual, for this time of year, just checking on brood patterns and swarm cells. Two main things we're looking at. And we had a storm roll through the other night. And I don't keep, I don't keep any dry fuel on hand. So the smoker had some fuel in it, but I had to put some stuff that was a little damp on top. I imagine that's probably not really helping to keep the smoker lit. Alright, some folks will probably say that was a lot of smoke, but you know, to each their own. And as I mentioned in a previous video, the plastic queen excluders that's the one thing I don't like about them is they have a lot of flex to them because they're plastic soft plastic and when they're glued down you end up popping them up which kind of gets the bees flying a little more than you may like outside frame like usual storing some nectar in there bunch of nectar in there. That'd be nice to put some of that in the super. Maybe they will eventually. Or maybe they won't. I'm trying to take the advice of some folks from social media land that basically said move a little slower be a little more gentle with the bees and they may they may not get as agitated so I'm keeping that in the back of my mind to do as I move through the frames I just had a little queen cell the creation of a queen cell on the top portion which would be a supercedural cell but it didn't have an egg or larva on it. The top of this frame, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I mean, they're bringing in some nectar. Okay. So we're four frames into it. Nice brood. Finally, this queen was kind of a uh, slow going, if you will. Nice brood. So that's definitely a good thing. Now this side doesn't appear to have any eggs. 
So, like usual, let's see. Let's see if we can find some eggs. Yeah, oh, come on. I thought I fixed my flashlights from last time, and now that one at least doesn't want to work. The small one. Let's see if we can see some eggs here. And yeah. So, first try right there. So it's good. emerging right there where the flashlight's at. It's kind of cool. It's always cool to see. Yeah, so there's eggs. There's also a nice, nicely drawn out queen cell, super procedural cell in the top third there. So if you watch my videos, you'll usually see me out here with sunglasses on. And I was thinking about it from the past few inspections. It's a dry cell. Past few inspections, I've uh, actually I'm gonna leave that alone because if I need if I need a frame for another colony, this has a lot of eggs, and until I just did that to the queen cell, I had a pretty nice developed queen cell. They could put an egg in it if they needed to create a queen. So, let's do a few things here. I keep saying cell. It's a queen cup. So, let's see. Smoker. That still has a little smoke. And I'm going to try and write cup right here. on your pen that isn't really I'm gonna give it a star and write C U P that doesn't really look like it's working and I don't know if that's from last time or not but there is a stinger sticking me in the knuckle. Yeah so that doesn't this pen I need to get a better pen. What's up with this? I'm gonna fix this last time. Oh there we go. Yeah, now it works. Okay, anyway. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna... I'll mark Queen Cups with a star and then figure something out for actually actual Queen Cells that have a an egg or a developed larva in it. So that's on the fourth frame. Nice brood, whole bunch of eggs. Sounds good. Nice to see finally. Maybe it's a change in the weather. It's warmed up finally and some of the cold nights have stopped, so maybe the bees are enjoying that as well. That's a pretty light frame. However, this is good to see too. I put this frame more in the center because it had a lot of nicely drawn wax. Fewer wax as you can see. So this will be a good one too. This one has a ton of eggs. I'm going to hold it up to the camera and move slowly. Hopefully you can see that. It has a ton of eggs in every single cell. So this colony is finally building up. It was a bit of an unusually warm winter and an early spring. Yeah, there's eggs in every single cell in this one. This will be a good one too to move into another colony if you needed to give them a boost or a shot at becoming queen right if you can't determine if they have a queen or not. Okay. As so I was saying, it was an unusually warm winter and an early spring to where, you know, I thought the colonies would really build up quickly, but that was in March. And As I've mentioned in previous videos, a few friends around here that are from the area and do some farming mentioned to me when we were talking about all this that for our area here in eastern North Carolina around Jacksonville and everything, 
March, or not March, but April. April 21st, you know, basically three weeks into April, that's when, that's when the farmers start getting busy. And he was telling me this, probably not to get discouraged if your bees aren't doing too great, because it really hasn't truly warmed up yet. There's a whole bunch of eggs here. You can see where the light is. And as we move down, pupated larva. So this queen, this queen is kicked into high gear. A whole bunch of pupated larva right there. If you follow the light, hopefully you can see that. There's nice pollen and then capped brood on this side. So this colony is going to this colony should explode very soon. So the very fourth frame, I started, the fourth frame had nice brood, and then the fifth frame, sixth frame, a ton of eggs. Alright, the bees are all over the camera again, for whatever reason. I'm curious if anybody knows why it's on camera. Maybe Frequency. Here, I'll give you a close up of this nice pollen being brought in right there. Yeah. So I feel a lot better with this colony so far. And sometimes in the past I would stop here, but again, it being swarm season. You really want to really want to check every frame. Look at that. That's a nice bird there. You really want to check every frame for swarm cells, which are typically at the bottom. There's a nice cup being developed there. I'll leave that one alone. Yeah, so that's what I was saying earlier. Being discouraged or getting discouraged, even though the winters are kind of warm and everything. So here we are. Uh, it's the 25th or 26th. It's the last Sunday in April, I believe. So late April. And this colony is looking a lot better than it has been. So I'll just put this in the back of my memories. Years, you know, coming out here in, in February, if it's warm enough, March, you know, things aren't looking too good, but you can definitely tell a difference as the weeks go by, and for sure, when, once we're into a full, like a full nectar flight. Yeah. This is looking nice. frames that I talked about having solid solid frames of eggs. That's the first time I've seen this or seen that with this colony as far as having a few resources of few frames available to possibly get another hive healthy. And that is not how I started. started with one colony, successfully overwintered that colony, and I really attribute that to being out here weekly, at least weekly, and just taking care of the bees as much as possible. Which is funny, because this is our third year rolling into our fourth year, and I tried a few things differently this year. Like, unlike years in the past, I did not come out here on warm winter days in like February and everything. So I gave them as much time between inspections. And I think, I think that may have bit me in the butt because I had a few colonies swarm on me. Or if I came out here more often. 
probably it was probably pretty preventable. All right. All right. So they're looking good. There's a lot more bees in here than there were last week, and next week there will be even more bees with the amount of frames of kept brood that will probably hatch here soon. By the time I come out here. become capped and over the next two to three weeks they should uh, they should hatch out and this colony will explode so if I can finally finish my thought I was trying to share with y'all about not getting discouraged you know third week of April and all that is if you can have healthy hives that look like this rolling into May between May and June, hopefully I can say that with my words, between May and June, it doesn't take much for a, a very strong colony to pack out a honey super. Some colonies can fill a honey super in just two weeks, so that's just something to keep in mind. Things might not be moving, but things can change both ways, positively and negatively, within a matter of weeks. Alright, well, I can tell by the time on the camera slower because we're about 20 23 minutes or so let's give a quick look at the hive entrance it's kind of interesting to see the bees fanning sticking their heads up in there and fanning just spread into queen's pheromone but yeah this colony looks good looks, that's the best it's looked this year so far nice frames of eggs frames into it, solid cap to brood, and I, I checkerboarded the frames last week, so that's, that makes sense why the fourth frame had nice cap to brood, the fifth frame had a whole bunch of eggs, so I moved things around and I'm glad to see that actually worked out, so definitely not scared or hesitant to try things, uh, I, do get, I do get discouraged occasionally when I try things and it doesn't work out, so just like anything, but yeah, overall. This colony looks healthy, very healthy, and this frame spacer from Amazon for 10 bucks. A little tricky at first, I guess, haven't never used it before, but that works out just fine, and I look forward to being out here next week. Hopefully you all tune back in and join me, and over the next few months, hopefully we see the uh, Honey Super become fuller and fuller and heavier and heavier. Alright, so that's it. Cole's Farm. Beautiful Sunday. Not really overcast, just a little cloudy. The weather's finally in the 70s. It feels great. Even though we had a storm roll through last night, the humidity's a little high. But either way, thanks for watching. Appreciate it, everybody.